So I guess I can um, add keynote speaker for Yuruko On Conference on my resume now, right? Um, cool. So thank you so much for coming. I hope your lunch was good. Thank you so much for your votes. I feel really, you know, honored to be here on the stage. So let's get into it. Um, my name is Adrian. I worked as a freelancer in corporations in the Silicon Valley startup. Uh, I've been to all kinds of teams. Um, I'm an aspiring entrepreneur now. I host Friendly RB Conference, which I told you about. It's, it's uh, next week in Bucharest. Uh, I'm the co-host of The Friendly Show with my friend Yaro. Go check it out, www.friendly.show. You'll find me, Adrian the Dev, everywhere. So I'm easy to find. Um, I didn't start my career in, uh, in uh, Rails or Ruby. I started with PHP, WordPress, Laravel, a little bit of Node.js. And at some point, uh, somebody showed me uh, Rails. And one thing that I noticed is Rails is so declarative. Instead of writing what you need to do, you just tell it what you need to do, and it will do it for you. So you tell it what you need to do, and it will do it for you. So you get all, all of these DSLs everywhere. You'll see them in um, models, controllers, routes, configuration, service objects everywhere. So uh, Rails is powered and Ruby is powered by uh, DSLs. Um, so when I started with uh, Rails, as maybe uh, a lot of people here, you start with uh, the scaffolding command. You run the Rails, uh, Rails generate scaffold, and then you get this beautiful controller. You get this nice index view. You get the forms. It's a somehow barely usable uh, user interface. And you start building your page uh, resource, and you start adding fe uh, features. And then you have another resource, maybe users. What do you do? You run the scaffold again, and then you do it all again. And maybe you've uh, previously written some other piece of code, so you copy it from one resource to another, and then maybe it doesn't really work in production because maybe the label has changed. So copy and pasting is not really super cool to do. And you know, building it from scratch every time is not uh, uh, very cool. So usually what happens um, when you're starting to, to build a product, you start slow, small, you build a small page, and then uh, you start adding things and adding things and adding things. And at some point, when you have a lot of resources, you start to um, move them from one project to another. And again, you think, OK, I'm an engineer. I don't have to copy and paste things. So um, I'm going to create abstractions. So I'm going to try and create some plugins. Like, for example, this uh, search, maybe you have it in project A. You just type something in, you hit, you hit enter, it searches. For a project B, you move it there, but they have new requirements, so you add new, new options. For project C, again, new requirements, new options. And you have to do everything quickly, right? So you write no documentation, you write uh, no tests, and instead of having one search abstraction for three, four projects, you end up with three, four different searches, right? So this is what happens usually with, probably not with you guys, but this is what happens in other projects. Uh, the things you write internally, you, nobody writes documentation for it. Nobody does automated testing. Uh, systems change from one project to another. At some point, onboarding becomes difficult. You bring new people to the project, and nobody knows how that thing works because the person that built it left the company. Um, so internal, system usual, internal systems decay over time, and what usually happens is somebody comes, press the reset button, and they say, this is, this is bad. We can't work with this. Let's just rewrite it. And we kind of scratch the project, right? Um, now, getting back to, to Rails is declarative. I was thinking, why don't we have something like this for the UI? Uh, why don't we have a DSL to build our UIs and our you know, front-end things? And we kind of do. We have things like Ad Active Admin and Rails Admin, which are a little bit subpar for our users and for uh, a developer experience as well. So this is why I built Avo. Uh, and what is Avo is a tool that helps developers build business apps fast. And what are business apps? Uh, they are those admin panels 
that we all build, uh, back offices, any type of internal tool, think about CRMs um, or, or ERPs, they can be uh, customer-facing apps, right? Like ticketing apps, uh, any type of content management system that you need to write in Rails, Apple will help you with. Uh, so they are basically CRUD applications. And if you think about it, you can boil down a lot of applications to CRUD applications. Like Instagram, you have a feed, a list of things. You click it, you get the details. You have an edit button. You have uh, a form there. Then you have uh, um, comments, which comments are associations. So you can, like Airbnb, booking.com, a lot of applications, you can boil them down to CRUD applications. Uh, so how does it, so it helps developers build business apps. How does it do that? It, it sticks very close to Rails defaults. We want uh, contributors to check out the source code and see what we do. We don't do any kind of big magic there. We don't do any monkey patching. Uh, we have a smart and extendable DSL, and I'll show you uh, that in just a second. Uh, whenever the DSL doesn't help you, it will get out of your way, and it will fall back to familiar Rails code, so something you already know. Uh, Avo is properly tested. Uh, it's heavily documented, and it's community-driven. We have a lot of contributors. It's not just uh, me behind the desk uh, building this thing. Uh, Licensing. So right now we're on Avo 2. It has two versions. It's a community version and then a pro version, and uh, which is a fixed fee per application. Right now we're in open beta for Avo 3. Uh, again, the community version will be LGPL, so open source. We're going to have a few community packages. Um, every um, commercial package has a perpetual fallback license, meaning once you get it, you can keep that latest version if you don't want to uh, keep the subscription. We have over 130 happy customers, over 250 apps running Avo in production, over uh, 1.2K GitHub stars. Um, yeah, distribution. Avo is a Rails engine, which is really cool to hook up into uh, your current Rails application. Uh, it's available on Rumi Gems. Avo works within your app, so it's a gem that you install inside your app. It's designed to work for existing apps, so you don't have to you know, start new apps and, and use it, so you can put it, plug it into your, uh, your current app, or you can use it for uh, your new apps. Uh, and all the data stays with you. We don't send any data to our place. It's not a cloud service like Retool or Forest Admin. Um, main features. I like to think, of it, uh, think about it as it has three main features. It's the CRUD interface, it's the dashboards, and the custom content. The CRUD interface probably has 70% of all the value. Dashboards are great. And custom content, it's just an umbrella name for everything else you need to, every time you need to hook in and change something that the DSL doesn't uh, give you out of the box. Um, the, I'm going to speak a lot about the CRUD. So uh, the way it works, a resource maps to a model. A model can have multiple resources. Uh, resources have fields. Again, think about that. You tell it what you need to do, and it will do it for you. And then all resources benefit from built-in search, uh, sorting, filters, actions, uh, active storage, everything you definitely need in a new um, internal tool or CMS. Um, this is the DSL. On the left, you have a Rails model with validations, uh, associations, uh, what else, uh, and other options. And on the right, this is a resource, right? So it's a post resource. So it matches to the post model. And then uh, you can set the title, you can, search, you can set the search query, uh, you can add eager loading, and then you start to add fields. So fields can have, uh, can be, we have about 30 uh, built-in fields. They can be simple from text and text area to very advanced to markdown tricks or other things. Uh, fields can have options. Uh, what else? Um, cover photo, so the simplest Active storage integration, you will see it in just one line. We can have computed fields and uh, more. All the associations that Rails support, so belongs to, has many, has and belongs to many, STI, whatever you need, we have it. We can also add filters and actions. Cool. Nine minutes, perfect. We have time for live demo. So what are we going to build? Let's imagine we are... A, uh, an owner of a real estate agency in Hawaii, and we want to digitize our operations. So this is what Midjourney gave me for a real estate agency in Hawaii. So 
that's cool. We're gonna have, we're gonna keep it simple. So we're gonna have users, which are the agents of that real estate agency, the properties that are listed there, and the bookings. And if you just gonna wait with me just for a few seconds to set up, perfect. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. Let me take a sip of water. Okay, we have a step-by-step -step for our live demo because we have a lot of things to show you. So let's start with installation. I'm going to use uh, this Rails application. I'm gonna use Overmind to run this and it's going to start up my application and it's just a regular Rails app with device installed. It only has the user's um, model added and active storage. So nothing, nothing else, nothing fancy. And if the internet gods will help me, I don't, Come on. Okay, let me start it again. Cool, 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 cool. Perfect, we're loading. We're good. Cool, so this is the application, nothing inside this link. This is the app, nothing inside, we don't have an AVO folder, nothing. So we are brand new. Cool, let's start with installation. I'm gonna go on my website and copy this snippet. I'm gonna go inside this app, paste the snippet, and this will use a Rails Bytes template, uh, which will add AVO to our gem file and will run AVO install, which will uh, add um, uh, the route for AVO and it will route, add the configuration file as well. Any minute now. Perfect. So basically, I have the, the route mounted and the configuration file. Cool. Um, next. Next, let's go into our configuration file. We just need uh, a little bit of um, uh, house housekeeping. I'm going to switch this to Pro, and I'm going to add a license just because I want to show you some cool things. And next, what we need to do is add the current user model. So as I, as I said, Avo is designed to work with whatever you want. You can bring your own. So we, it works very well with device, but if you use something else like Rodot or anything else, you can do that. You just have to tell it what your current user is. So I'm gonna say for the current user method, it's just current user. Uh, now let's visit the app. Let, actually, let's restart the application because we installed a new gem. Perfect. Now if I go to slash avo, any minute now, something with my computer today, I don't know. Definitely something with my computer. Perfect. Okay, cool. So this is avo, and right off the bat, avo, when I installed it, it figured out that I have a user's model and it needs to generate for me a user resource. And now I can go and create new users if I want. If I had any in the database, it would just show it to me. I'm gonna show you how user resource looks like. It's like this. So now it has the email, the first name, and the last name. It figured that out from the database columns that I already had. And it added the, those fields. Cool, but right now everybody has access to my admin panel and maybe we don't want that. So let's uh, hide that. I'm gonna go into my routes. And I'm going to, thank you. Thank you, I appreciate it. Cool, and I'm going to hide the Avo route behind an authentication. We need to have an authenticated user. I'm gonna refresh, and now let me just sign up really quick. I'm going to use the password secret. Don't tell anyone. It's the best password. I'm not using WebAuth N yet. Um, okay, cool. So now I can see all, my, uh, all the users in my database. So I can go to this user, I can see the details, I can hit edit, and I already have a nice screen where I can uh, update these details. So Adrian, Adrian, and my, my last name. 
Cool. You might have noticed that we have this one here. That's because Avo doesn't really know what this record is, uh, is called because not all records are the same. Like posts have titles, humans have names, other things have labels. So basically, let's tell them, let's tell it what the title of this uh, resource is. And I'm going to go back to my re user resource and I'm going to say first name. So now it's going to take that first name and this would be the representation of this user in Avo. But maybe we want to do a little bit more. We want to see the full name. I'm going to go into my user model and I'm going to say that name and th I'm just going to join the first and the last name and go back to my user resource and use that one. So basically, whatever method that record, if that record responds to a method, you'll be able to use it. Cool. Now let me show you something cool with active storage. I'm going to go into my user resource. I'm going to do whatever anybody would do to add a file has one attached, and I'm gonna say photo. I'm gonna go back to my user, I refresh, nothing happened because I didn't configure my user resource. And I'm going to go here, I'm gonna say field photo because that is the ID of the attachment as file. And I'm going to say is image true. Now if I refresh the page, the user resource told Avo that hey, this user, this model has a file attached. If I hit edit, I choose the file. I'm gonna go here, choose my photo, save. Yeah, I'm gonna reboot this. Cool, and now I have active storage integration in about five minutes and one line of code. Is that cool? A little bit cool? A little bit cool. Okay, we're going to rate the coolest level, the coolness level from like one to ten, and we'll see if, if it rises with this uh, live presentation. Okay, cool. So we generated the first resource. Let's customize the current user. We did that. Uh, active storage. We did that. Add the property resource. So whenever we need to add a new resource, what do we do? We go into our command line. Rails generate model property, and this property will have a name. Um, a, an address and a user, which references. I'm gonna hit enter, and Rails will do its thing. It will generate the model, the controller, and the uh, migration, and Avo will hook in, and will figure out, hey, you created the model, probably you need a resource for that. And it created for me a property resource. And again, from the database table, it inferred what kind of fields I have. So now if I go back to my admin panel, I hit refresh, of course I'm gonna run the pending migration, and then properties, and now I have another page for properties. Cool. Let's add a property. Uh, let's say camp address uh, kawaii, and then I'm gonna choose a user. So basically right now, because I told it that it has that association with the user, it will show me all the users there. So I'm gonna choose a user, save, and I already have that property. Let's do something else. Let's add a photo to it as well. Has one attached, photo. And again, if I refresh, nothing happens. But if I go down here, I add it. Photo as file is image true. Maybe we can figure out that if it's an image by ourselves. We need to, that's a good to-do list on, on my end. So let's select an image. And now we have another resource. So this is how quick we can get started and add resources to our application. Again, we have this one here. That's a simple fix. Remember for lamps, from last time, I just choose name because we have that database column, and now that's perfectly. Cool. Let's do some, something else. We have right here the belongs to, the property belongs to a user. Let's do the inverse. Uh, maybe I want to go to one user, and I want to see all the properties. So I'm going to my user model, has many. I'm going to need your help. If I do any typos, please tell me. So has many properties. Okay, and now I'm gonna go into my user resource and add it. Field properties as has many. I refresh the page and now I have a table with all of the properties attached to that user. Is this a little bit cool? Maybe one more level up, okay, cool. Cool, next, uh, let's create a property, but maybe let's create it from this user. So I'm gonna click create, and I'm gonna say whatever, dreamy property. I'm gonna say uh, Maui, 
And now I can't choose the user because it knows I'm coming from that user, so it's smart like that. And let's choose this uh, property here. Perfect. And now it came back to the user because it knows where it, where it uh, came from. Cool. Next, has many description. So I told you about the custom content. That is, those are like tiny hooks where you can you know, hook in and escape the DSL and you can add plenty of things. And one of the cool things you can do is go into the user resource, add the has many, and say something like uh, description. Description. Um, and I'll say properties of that user. And if, if I refresh the page and I go to properties, I get this tiny description here. It's not much, but it's going to help a few people. Uh, cool. Let's generate the booking. Again, we're going to generate a new model. What are we doing? Rails generate model uh, booking. And it's going to have a visitor. So who will visit the booking? It's going to have a visit at timestamped when we booked the booking, a visited at when it happened, uh, and it will re reference a user and a property. So basically, uh, a user, an agent, will take a customer to that property. Again, Rails does its thing. Uh, it will generate the model, a controller, and the migration, and then Ava will hook in and create that uh, resource for you. Uh, so you can go into our booking resource, and we have all of those fields inferred from that database table. If I refresh the page, run the pending migrations, and go to bookings, I can already create a booking. And I'm going to say, Sergi, maybe next week. Uh, I'm going to leave this blank. Maybe he set it up with me, and the first property. And now I have this booking. But this booking doesn't have a name again. OK. Uh, I'm going to go into my booking um, model. I'm going to say def. Maybe I'm going to say label. And I'm going to say, OK, uh, visit at when it's going to happen and a property name or, some, or visitor, maybe. And now I'm going to use that as my title. So now I can have this custom name for this resource. Cool. Um, now that you have kind of um, a good understanding about how this database is um, structured, let me re-see the database with proper data. So we have, we have better data inside. Oh, come on. It's an M1. Uh, OK, seeds. I think I have something here. Coordinates, okay. Okay, perfect. This should work. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, the issue is that for properties, um, <laughs> photos. Okay, there's one thing I forgot. Has many attached. Let's attach, I showed you how to attach one photo. Let's attach many photos, more photos. So has, one, has many attached photos. That's on the property model. I'm going to go on the property resource. And guess what? I'm going to do the same. Photos as files, simple enough. And if I go back to a property, of course. If I go to a property, then I can select multiple files for this property. Okay, property photos, and just select a few. And when I hit save, I'll have this nice um, gallery for you where you can see them as a grid. You can see like details for it. It supports um, direct upload to cloud, whatever you need. Cool. Let me reseed it and get back to uh, business. Come on, come on. Okay, I think we're good. All right, we're good. I'm going to refresh my website and log in as James because we have new users. Go back to Avo. OK, cool. So now we have a bunch of users. We're going to think that, we're going to imagine that James is running the place because he has this cool hat here. And the others are just agents. Um, and we have a few properties which all have photos and uh, the main photo and some photos, and we have no bookings. But let's build something. Cool. Now we're getting into that nitty gritty where, you know, okay, this is simple. Okay, I've seen this around, you know, this is easy. You know, we just add a few fields, it's all good. Let's get into like more advanced customization and think about 
other scenarios where you know, we might get you know, requirements for a, a specific application. So I'm gonna go inside the users and I'm going to, you can create a new property for a user or you can attach some properties. So basically now I get a listing of all the properties, maybe this one, but maybe there's a business need that it's not allowed to see all the properties, but maybe just some of them, maybe the ones that are assigned to you or whatever. So now let's, let's do that just now. So I'm gonna go inside my user resource, user resource uh, onto my has many field and I'm gonna say attach scope. And this is the first block you'll see. Uh, we have a lot of blocks in AVO. This is where you have a lot of power. So you'll have access to params here. You'll have access to request. You'll have access to resource and the resource model. You'll have access to the current user, everything you need, everything you need to figure out things. And in this block in particular, you have access to the query, which is actually the, the query that is being done when this uh, dropdown is being rendered. So if I refresh the page and hit attach property, all of the properties show up because I just returned this query object, which is an active record query. And let's imagine that we only want to show the properties that are starting with letter C. It's a stupid business need, but this is what they need. Okay, so I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna hit, I don't wanna write it like. Okay, so query where first name like C. It starts with C, okay? I'm gonna refresh the page, attach property, attach prop, okay, this is the name of the property, and attach, and now I only get those properties. So imagine what you can build with this. You can check out if the current user is an admin, if it has access to a few things, um, if, the, if, if you have any special params passed in the URL, like whatever you need, if, it, if a, like a tenant has access to another resource, you can do whatever you want, right? Cool. Is this a little bit cooler? A little bit, a little bit, okay, cool. It's okay, I still have more, I still have more. Cool, has many query scoping. This is similar. Maybe let's find a user that has multiple properties. So this is, these are the properties and let's go to Beatrice. Beatrice. Uh, and she has uh, more properties, but maybe, again, there's a business need that, hey, I don't want to show everything, right? I just need, you know, the properties that, uh, you know, have the roof built or whatever. So again, I'm going to go inside the user resource. I am here. And next to attach scope, I can say, um, what is it, scope? Is it scope? I forgot, it's okay, it does a lot. So Avo does a lot, I, I always forget things. Uh, so scope, and again, I have access to the query object. If I return, I just get the full query back. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing, just return the things that start with the letter C. And you get that. So again, imagine you can do whatever you want. Cool, let's finish this. Let's get into something a little bit cooler, authorization. Does everybody know what authorization is? as opposed to what authentication is? Okay, one minute left. I'm gonna be a few more minutes. Uh, okay, so authorization means you can tell which people have access to which things. So, um, actually, let's skip authorization. It's very cool, it's very built in. It can do everything you need. You can hide buttons, show buttons, everything you need. Let's go to search, because this is cool. Uh, you know, Maybe you've seen this search query everywhere. I'm just enabling this. And for the user resource, I'm gonna say, I'm using Ransack, but you can use whatever you want if you wanna call uh, Elasticsearch or uh, something else. So I'm just gonna say what Ransack needs to hear, like first name contains, and I'm gonna give it params of Q, so whatever the user uh, search for and last name contains. And now if I go back to my user, now I have this search button and I can just search for, for a user. Next, I'm gonna go into property, resource, and I'm gonna do the same. And I'm going to do uh, name contains params of Q. And now I have the same thing for properties, which you might have guessed. But the cool thing is you can you now have global search. And if you do one search in one box, you get all of the things searched. And you can add tiny descriptions, you can add avatars, you can even control what happens when somebody selects a record, if you wanna send them somewhere else. A little bit cooler? A little bit, okay, cool. It's okay, it's okay. Authorization was great, but it's okay, we'll figure it out. 
Sorting, this is a difficult one. Please pay attention, this is very cool. So I'm gonna go into my property resource maybe. Okay, let's see properties. And I'm gonna go to this name and say sortable, true. And if I hit refresh, I can now sort it. Nice, I heard the nice there, okay, cool. You can also add like custom sorting with query, whatever you need, cool. Uh, filters, okay, let's go, let's get going. Rails generate AVO filter, and I'm gonna say agent filter, I'm gonna move a little bit faster, and when I generate this, I get one file, which is agent filter. I'm going to get the name of this class, I'm gonna go into my user resource, and I'm going to paste it here, filter, agent filter. Now I'm gonna go to my users, and filter agent filter no 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 okay let me restart this always helps okay and if i refresh now let's imagine that we want to have a filter where we only see the agents or the owner and now i have this tiny button here and i have this agent filter this drop down doesn't have anything because we haven't configured it yet. okay perfect agent filter options i'm gonna go fast owner owner right and I'm gonna say agent. Cool, refresh, filters, let's see the owners. Nothing happens because we haven't configured what happens, how we find the owner. But we do know that the owner is James. You, we might have a different column in our database or roles or whatever, but we'll just make it simple. So how do we do that? We have this def apply method, which gives us like the request, the query, and the value. And again, you have access to the query. So basically whatever is being queried here as an active record, query you have access to. So I'll do uh, if value, uh, value of owner, else, and I'm, if uh, this is the value of owner, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna add that like statement. Hmm. Okay, I don't wanna lose you. So if the value of owner is true, we're gonna do, okay, the, the, the users that have the first name that start with James. So let's try this. Okay, because this is a string. Cool, so now we see the owners. If I hit agent, I get everybody else. But um, you know, you can customize it however you want. You get this nice reset filter. Okay, I'm not gonna ask, this is definitely cool. Uh, let's go to actions. We usually need actions on our uh, records. So let's imagine that we have this booking resource. Again, I'm gonna add Sergi, and I'm gonna say he's, he plans to visit next week, and whatever, we're just gonna assign uh, them one, um, a few properties. Cool, now what happens if I want to update this, and I wanna say visit that, when did he actually visit? We can go edit and select it, or we can do something else, we can add an action. So Rails generate avo action, mark a visited action, what is this going to give us? One file for action. Mark visited. I'm gonna take this, add it to my user resource. And now if I go back, uh, actually it's not my user resource, it's my booking resource. I told you I need your help. You're not paying attention. Okay, um, okay, of course, of course I have to refresh this. Why? You usually don't have to do this, but I don't know. Um, cool, so now when I'm on the index page or when I'm on the show page, I have this mark visited action, which I click and it asks me, if it, are you sure you want to run this action? Okay, if I run, hit run, nothing happens because we haven't configured the, resource, the file. Okay, cool, mark visited action. And again, we have this handle method, right? Where we get some arguments. And one of the arguments are the, is the models, right? So all of the records that you have selected. So it might have one, when you're in the show page or you might have multiple and you just select them all. And now we can do something like models.update visited at, and you can say time that now, okay? And let's try this out, mark visited. Uh, okay, because it's a model, I'm iterating. You're not paying attention, come on guys, come on, cool. Yeah, let's, let's sum up. Yeah, I'll sum it up. Okay, cool. Um, is this a little bit cooler? Cool. Dashboards, uh, cards, custom content, other things. Hit me up because I'll show you. So what I showed you right now is basically 
um, just the top, tip of the iceberg, it does a lot. It helps a lot of teams move really fast. And if there's one thing that I want you to leave from this talk is that internal systems usually get no documentation, they get no testing, sorry, they get no testing, um, systems change from one project to another, they decay over time and usually people rewrite them. So it's better to use something uh, community driven that will, that will have everything you need. Um, Achu and uh, Ziakui. Thank you so much. Thank you.